It's been over 20 years since we last had supersonic flight. In fact, uh, the Concorde's first flight was in 1969, and today, still, the flight time between New York and London is the same as it was about 50 years ago. So the world around us has changed quite a lot. Blake, why not planes? I think it goes back to the story of how innovation works and how it doesn't work. Um, you know, the first 50 years of flight from the Wright brothers through to the introduction of jet travel in the late 1950s, every step forward, which by the way, every step forward was a step in speed, uh, was was driven commercially. Uh, you know, Douglas built the DC-3 because he saw a large market opportunity for that specific airplane. Uh, Boeing brought the 707 to market, the first you know really successful jet lighter, again, because they thought they could sell a lot of them and that the product made sense. And then in the 1960s, uh, we lost our way and we shifted from a commercially driven model of innovation in aerospace to a national prestige driven model. So we we did Concorde for supersonic and we did Apollo for space exploration. And it's a little bit heresy to say this as an aerospace person, but uh, I think both were terrible ideas and we shouldn't have done them. Um, and I think Apollo killed space exploration and Concorde killed supersonic flight. Because what happened was instead of having to have an entrepreneurially led, commercially led approach where the product has to make sense and it has to be worth developing and costs matter. Uh, we had sort of unlimited government resources poured into government spec projects. And so Apollo, obviously there was no business model for going to the moon. Nobody even talked about it. But Concord was in some ways worse because it pretended to be commercial. Um, and, uh, and and yet nobody thought hard about the economics. They were just trying to beat the Russians. So that here's a hundred seat airplane. Uh, by the way, a hundred uncomfortable seats. You might mistake them for like seats out of like Southwest or Ryanair, um, where adjusted for inflation, the fares ended up being about twenty thousand dollars. And so, if it's the nineteen seventies or eighties, you can't find a hundred people that want to drop twenty grand to go somewhere really fast in an uncomfortable seat. It never made any sense. It was dead on arrival, and and yet. The, the consequences of this were just tremendous. On one hand, the industry learned all the wrong lessons from Concorde, and they concluded that supersonic flight was not viable, not that Concorde was not viable. There's, so there's two things got equated. And, and worse, because now this is a matter of like national prestige, now geopolitics got involved, right? And so the American competitor to Concorde was canceled. And um, one of the, uh, after that happened, then we did the stupidest thing that we've ever done in the history of regulation, which is we banned supersonic flight in the U.S. And uh, that, I think, if you pull on that thread, it takes you all the way to like the collapse of Boeing that we're seeing now. Uh, because, because literally it was not possible to build the next better product because the next better product would have been a supersonic private jet that was designed to carry a couple of wealthy people coast to coast it would have been small, simple, uh, and and that would have started off the next innovation cycle. Uh, and uh, and had that happened, we'd all be going Mach five by now. But basically, they banned the minimum viable supersonic jet, and the result was half a century of stasis and regression. And I think one of the things that happened is it, it led to a whole generation of talented people who didn't even go into aerospace. <laughs> 